magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun This is Gino from The Secret Kindergarten. Let's play a little game. Okay. It's name that sound time. All right. We are going to guess what the sound is. And I'll give you a little hint. These are all musical instruments. So let's listen to the first one. And you tell me which instrument it is. Here we go. Okay, one more time. Do you know which instrument that is? What was that? That's right. That was a trumpet. Yay. Okay, ready for the next one? Here we go. What? Which instrument is this one? instrument was that what's that that is correct that was a violin now playing the violin in an interesting way all right are you ready for the next one here we go what instrument is this What instrument that is? What's that? Go on, have a think. The person is using their fingers to play this instrument. The fingers are making the sound by tapping onto a keyboard. That's right. It's a piano! Wow. Aren't pianos amazing? I wish I could play the piano as well as that person. Okay. Here we go. Here's another one. What instrument is this? Wow. Can you hear the person blowing? Can you hear the musician breathing, going, <laughs> Do you know what instrument that is? That's right. It's a flute. Now, that's a very pretty instrument. Very pretty sound. Right, now, this one is kind of tricky. This one's very tricky, but let's listen to it.
You don't hear an instrument like this very often, do you? Do you know which instrument this is? It's a harp. And you know what, to be perfectly honest, it's a Japanese harp. It's called a koto. <laughs> what a beautiful instrument. Listen to that. Wow. And all of this listening to different instruments makes me want to hear some music. So let's hear some music from Nancy Stewart of nancymusic.com.
Halloween coming up, I believe. Who wants to hear some scary stories? Let's listen to this story called The Wizard's Palace. The Wizard's Palace by Elton Craig Once upon a time, a long while ago, a prince started out to seek his fortune. So he left the grim old castle where he and his father and his father's father had been born and took the world for his pillow as they say in old legends. For, you see, a stay-at-home prince was not thought much of in those days, it being the fashion to have adventures. He started out one morning as soon as the sun was up and shining, and journeyed toward a great forest that stretched dim, deep, and mysterious away to the west. Now this forest was enchanted, and it was said that in the middle of it stood a wonderful palace that was as green as the ocean and had a thousand and six little windows with a dwarf looking out of each. In this castle lived a wizard who was quite out of the common run of wizards, for he had nineteen legs and twenty-one hands and a poor, pretty enchanted princess. Well, the prince reached the forest just at nightfall. It was a curious place, for every flower had a little head peeping out of it that nodded to him, and the tall trees shook their great sides with laughter, and, bending down, tried to wrap their arms around him as he passed. And this was truly dreadful, for if those goblin trees had once caught the prince, they would never have let him go. Suddenly he heard loud cries, and looking around, saw a will-o'-the-wisp rushing toward him, chased by a large bat, who was trying to blow out its lamp with its wings. Now, everybody knows that a will-o'-the-wisp is of no use whatsoever without its light, so the prince drove the bat off with his cap. "'Many thanks, my dear prince,' said a tiny voice in the dancing flame. When you reach the palace, remember to say, Breck cock, jock lock, to everything they ask you, and you will gain the princess. With that, it danced off. The prince went on, and after a long time, he reached the palace, which shone like the sun in the dark wood. And just as he reached it, the thousand and six little windows flew wide open, and a thousand and six dwarves stuck out their heads, and screamed all together, Crack, crack, glack. Brack, clock, jock, lock, answered the prince, and they all gave a horrible yell, dropped to the ground, and rushed into the forest. Come, they are done for anyway, said the prince, and he opened the door and went into the great hall. A wonderful place it was, to be sure. The floor was of gold, and the walls were covered with odd figures that danced and swayed and looked out laughing from between the cobweb curtains. Right in the middle of the hall was the old wizard, sitting in a great silver chair, with his twenty-one hands folded and his eyes shut, and by his side, in a little ivory chair, was the loveliest maiden the prince had ever seen. For her face was as fair as a lily, and her eyes as blue as the sky, while the lovely hair that rippled to her feet was like spun gold. Anyone could see with half an eye that she was a true princess. Just then the wizard opened his eyes, and seeing the prince, he seemed ready to die of rage, and jumped to his feet, roaring, Flip-flap fiddle! Brick-crock, jock grock answered the prince, not in the least afraid. Then the wizard screamed and rushed at him. Dear me, how they fought, while the poor little princess got behind her chair and sobbed. But at last the prince gave him a dreadful slash that cut his head off, and then there was nothing left to do but to comfort the princess. The princess showed him where the wizard kept his treasure, and they put some chests of gold on two horses and rode away to the princess's castle. Then they were married. They had sixteen children, eight boys and eight girls, 
and the princess dressed the boys in blue and the girls in pink, and they all lived happily ever after. Turn out the light when you leave the room. Turn out the light when you leave the room. Turn out the light when you leave the room. It's an easy habit to make. Turn off the water while you're brushing your teeth. Turn off the water. Buzz, 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 
have time for an activity. And with Halloween coming up, we're going to do a Halloween story. Now, all you young children out there, you can choose for this story to be a ghost. Who wants to be a ghost? Great. You could choose to be a pumpkin. Who wants to be a pumpkin? <laughs> Excellent. And who wants to be a cat? Okay. So you can be a ghost, a pumpkin, or a cat. And when you hear these characters come up in the story, you've got to act like a ghost, or act like a pumpkin, or act like a cat in the story, okay? So here we go. Let's try. Once upon a time, there were a group of ghosts. Where are my ghosts at? Let's hear it from the ghosts. And there were a group of pumpkins. Let's hear it from the pumpkins. And there were black cats. Let's hear it for all my cats out there. It was Halloween and they all woke up and stretched in the morning. Oh, let's do a big stretch. All oh, my ghosts, pumpkins and cats. And they saluted the sun as it rose in the sky. Then they all set off for Halloween Town for a big party that night. The pumpkins left first because they were the slowest. Rolling across the fields. Can you roll across the fields, all you pumpkins? Then the cats left, sprinting and pouncing all the way. Whoa, go cats! Finally, the ghosts started on the path, flying gracefully across the sky. They all had to stop suddenly because they had reached a mountain that they had to climb. The ghosts had no problem and flew right up. Go ghosts, let's see you fly up. Woo! <laughs> the pumpkins, however, kept rolling down every time they tried to make the big climb. Can all you pumpkins do that? So the cats kindly pushed them up the mountain until they reached the top. Oh, thanks all you cats out there. The pumpkins then rolled quickly down the other side, chased by the cats. All the creatures reached the river that they all had to cross in their own way. How would you cross the river? The ghosts again flew over the water easily. Ooh. The cats hated the water. <laughs> oh, yes, they did. So they hitched a ride on the pumpkins, which floated across the river like boats. Finally, they all reached Halloween Town, where they joined the party. They bobbed for apples, they laughed, and they danced. Above them, they saw the huge crescent moon in the dark sky. So the pumpkins and the cats, you guys had to help each other out a lot and the ghosts just got to go woo <laughs> all the way through the story. <laughs> they didn't have to try very hard. It'd be quite fun being a ghost. Which character did you choose? bet you chose to be the ghost. <laughs> I did. I was the ghost over here. Thank you so much for listening and joining in with the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show right here on Revolu Revolution Radio. And stay tuned on Revolution Radio. Coming up for all you grown-ups out there, we've got Willow's Poetry Corner. That's my favorite time of the week. I get to turn, switch off and just listen to that show. And I'm really looking forward to it. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you at the next episode 
of Secret Kindergarten.